Hey, I want to welcome you back to another episode of a podcast that Jennifer and I, my wife, are doing together. My name is Johnny Scott. Jen Scott, right here. And uh, we lead a church here in Trinity, Florida, called Generations Christian Church, and a number of business as missions entities as we're just trying to serve our local community. So from that, from parenting our kids and what we're learning, uh, just different things on leadership. And these are things we talk about at night before we go to bed. You know, how is the day? What's going on? And what's God's word saying to us? And so uh, we, we have one we want to talk about today that actually is coming out of a season for us. This is one I would say in my life I've been probably plagued with. I think I have an issue with this one. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've read a number of books recently, uh, Jordan Rayner, Re Redeeming Your Time, John Mark Comer, uh, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry, and a few other kind of titles like that that talk about this subject. So I want to I want to give like a resiliency leadership from the Word of God principle that uh, I'm struggling with and I'm going to let you in on the struggle. Well, I think uh, those are the best conversations. If I'm being honest with yeah. you, if I'm going to listen to a podcast, Johnny, I want to know that you're telling me something that you've learned from. Yeah. Not because you're in a I'm in the midst of. You're in the midst of. So, like, I think I think what we wanted to share from our heart of leadership is that we've been in it now for a long time. Mm -hmm. And we've we've learned by mistake. We've learned by wins. We've learned from all of the angles. So. Yeah. So, it's the issue of rest. I remember when... Uh, this is going to be good. When I did my ordination <laughs> service. Yes, I remember. Richard. My dad. I don't remember what he said. I do. But he brought me. Oh my goodness. I didn't know I was going to talk about this. He brought me a rose. And a little glass. And he said, Johnny, stop to smell the roses. And that's been 26 years ago. Riley was. It was actually 24. It was right yeah, Riley after. Riley was born. Riley was born. So you're. I don't mean to cut in on your thought, but I want I want you to remember the 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 season that we were in at that time when he said that. Yeah. It was your ordination. We had just come out of a traumatic car accident that I endured yeah. and I was disabled for a while and Riley was a newborn baby. We were living with my parents and you had um we're just completing college. You had like 23 hours in, in one, one semester. semester. My final. And we had a week in ministry. All of those things at that time, and you were starting a band. The band was playing. We did 15 dates in two months. All of the that was happening, and on yeah. your ordination, I'm in a wheelchair a holding my baby, and your dad held a rose, and he did say that, and I cannot believe you just brought that up. Well, <laughs> I've struggled with that my whole life. There's always a carrot to chase. They're good carrots. They're fun. Mm -hmm. I watch, I'm watching my sons do the same thing. And I'm starting, you know, you start to realize that they, these are the good old days. And the journey is beautiful. And we don't do a good job resting because we're always chasing a thing. And um, this, like, this job here, this calling, this wonderful opportunity to preach the Word of God in a wonderful community, to a wonderful church, everything about it is great, but also to to build the kingdom of God. J Jesus says, I've come to build a new kingdom. Behold, the kingdom of God is here. And he says, establish, establish my kingdom as it is in heaven. So whatever it is in heaven, we're supposed to make it present here. So we're building community. We're building a city. To me, that goes into crazy places that other people wouldn't consider church. Mm -hmm. Coffee shops and schools and gyms and sports clubs and mm -hmm. Anything that is like, okay, that's, that's not against the word of God. You can do that. Sure. Let's do a karate class. Sounds like fun. I mean, we're all over the place. And so rest becomes a problem. Um, I don't stop to smell the roses. I don't, I don't do that enough, but I've been reading about it and looking at it, thinking about it. And uh, I've started to put some things into our practice that has really forced, forced us. Yeah. And some people would yeah. say, I can't believe you do that. They're, oh, I'd love to be a pastor. I mean, like, <laughs> man, it must be, must be nice to do that. Well, we, I do a writing retreat and in the past, you know, um, that's looked very different over the years. It has, this is new. I'm going to tell you, this is new. <laughs> what we get, what we do now, we've not always done. Three years ago, my writing retreat was vacation Yeah. and I didn't write anything. Right. I did read, I've always been a reader, right. but I would read a little bit and like maybe a book or two, a history book, because I, I love it. I would enjoy it. 
and we would go to the beach and it'd be two weeks and it, that's very normal. Mm -hmm. Then it started to get to be more here. And in my reading, if you're gonna do something more, take on leadership in your school, like, I mean, in any level, whoever you are, whatever you would say, are you gonna do more this year? Anything that is, it's gonna take more rest and process time than you think. Mm -hmm. So every one of my life, every book I was reading was telling me, it's gonna take more than you think. Well, I'm having meetings around here mm -hmm. regularly about stuff that I'm almost shy and embarrassed to tell everyone about because it sounds, it's so much more. It sounds crazy. Like mm -hmm. some people would be like, I, I would feel embarrassed to even say it, but I believe in it. So I'm starting to like, God, is it time to talk about this or that or that? And so I'm, my more has gotten bigger. So I've said, well, what am I going to do about the rest more to process it and think about it and pray about it and ask God, do you, do you bless it? Do you want it? Is it for you? Is it for your glory? And I need more time just to absorb like, oh, that, did that just happen? That meeting just happened. And what does that mean? And are we going to hire this person? What does that mean? And so we started to add a week. We added three weeks mm -hmm. two years ago. Mm -hmm. we, and, and, and sidebar, we don't vacation all year long. So you have more vacation time because you never take it. No, so we when we go away in the summer, it's because he's never used his vacation time. <laughs> true, true. And, and I get like, and you say that out of a little bit of like, oh man, this is, well, we're talking about this kind of a personal thing. Like how do you it get is. away? How much it's do you private. get away? It's private. We're inviting him into a private But I'm family. putting it out there. Yeah in a larger conversation to say, well, like, this is what you need. Like you need more rest than, you know, I'm being honest with my struggle as we entered a season of trying to literally, we've used the phrase, build a city to the glory of God. Mm -hmm. We want to, in Jeremiah, he says, you know, marry your sons I and daughters and plant gardens. I was just going to tell you oh. today. So that was going to be my add on, but since you went there, yeah. not to break up where you're going with that. Um, I'm on the Bible recap with Tara Lee Cobble. I have a bunch of ladies. We do it. I love it. And our reading today was, Jer was Jeremiah 29. And you and I talk about Jeremiah 29 in a, in a, lot. a lot, a lot because of the verse that gets thrown at you for, I know the, you know, when you're going through a hard time and somebody's like, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope in the future. And people throw that at you like that is a calling. It's all going to be great. It, it is, has and, to be. and it's true. But it the true. parts before, I had a friend once point out to me that that was written to the Israelites that were in exile for 70 years. And in the midst of the 70 year exile, God, They're crying out God, to God then says, Save us. right before the 11th verse, he says, build gardens while you're in exile. Like while you're in a Babylon, build gardens, uh, marry, marry your, your sons, sons and, daughters. and daughters, like, like and do the things let's, of life. Let's say all three. Then he says, pray for the city that you live in. Yes. And if the city prospers that you live in, then you'll prosper. Wow. That's what he says. Mm. And so this idea of um, rest and work and, you know, the city that we're trying to build and how big it was, we started out a week on. So we added a week. Mm. Then Back two years second. ago, we added another week to go away for mm -hmm. a month because it was one week to detach. Like science says, it takes seven days to pull away. And by the eighth day of vacation, that is the height of your rest. You can stay on a plateau of that, but it rarely doesn't get better. On the eighth day is the first day of a, what they call a total rest because of what it takes to psychologically retreat from your day to day. Mm -hmm. That's like scientific. So then we said, we'll get two weeks of vacation because what happens on the final week, and it happened this year, we said, we're not gonna get, but we're not gonna, we're not, we're, we're gonna, we're, we got one more week, but you know, Finley would come home and be like, hey, you know, when we get back, you got to do we this. Start and talking about the The text job. from stuff. And <laughs> my heart started to be like, well, when I get back next week, we got to load the bikes up. And how are we getting this to go? We got pulled out that last week. I don't care yeah, what anyone. You lose the last We enjoyed days. it. but So we did a month a year ago. Yeah. Then we did a month this year. Yeah. I've got lots of friends who are pastors and they take time off. I, I, I think I'm the only one that goes away and really detaches for that long. And it's difficult. I make myself do it because I love what I do. I love this job. I love to come back. Mm -hmm. But this is the first time when I went away and I really said, I'm going to rest in some specific ways. I'm going to pour in, mm -hmm. right? And try to read a book a day. Not all like He read stuff. a book. By the way, on our rest vacation. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's, it's a sign. You read a book a day. And but, then it became his, his, his new work became reading a book a day. 
We got to talk about that. Maybe well, I've not, I've not kept that up since This is not a counseling home. session, but I'm not confident that that was the rest God I've about. not <laughs> kept that up since we come home, but you've got to... You got to go, I heard from God in that. Yeah, I agree. And it wasn't all like leadership 101 or, you know, you know, NT, right? <laughs> you know, deep. But there was some of that. You did fun and you did fun reads and hard reads. But yeah, some Civil War stuff and some Lincoln stuff and some World War II Which stuff. Which is fun to him and that's not fun to anybody stuff. else. Man, I, I met God in that stuff. My soul was refreshed in that stuff. I saw the work of the Lord in yeah. people. I saw people who did hard things and cried out for God and their humanity and realized that they would build something and then they would die. Mm -hmm. And what would it be and what was it for? Right. It was deeply fulfilling. And one of the verses in my morning quiet time that hit me like, a, and there's so many verses in God's word about rest, but I want to read one for you. Uh, it comes from Psalm chapter four, verse eight. And get this, this is in a time where, you know, I need this by Friday or this isn't going to work. And man, we got to, I mean, a tumultuous time for me personally. At my age, at 47 years old, trying to do something bigger than I've ever done before outside of my area of expertise. And David says, in peace, I want that. What, where was this found? Sorry, Psalm what? Psalm 4.8. Okay. David says, in peace. And I stopped. I'm like, I want that. I need peace. At the, at like in, in my, how are we going to do this? How are we going to build this? What about the county? Oh, no, again, guys, problems. And it says, in peace. I will lie down and sleep. <laughs> I, I'm going to break this. This is big. This is big for you. For you alone, O oh Lord, make me dwell in safety. I'm going to tell you what. When you find out you have a three hundred thousand dollar problem because the civil engineer said the ground was here and the architect said the ground was here and there's a a foot of dirt and that's going to cost. At $2,000 a day for construction, general contracting services, 18 days, and then $300,000 in more <laughs> dirt work. I need peace, right. and that's not safety. That's, it's the project already cost too much. And now that problem, who's, who, like, what, that's just a Monday. Mm -hmm. And David said, you know what you need to do some days? You need to rest. You need to lie down and go to sleep. I think there are spurts of day to day throughout your year where you know what i get to problems at, in, in church and the mm -hmm. things we're doing where what's your solution pastor scott you got us here here's my solution you got us here in this 12 hours here's my solution and then you come home and i say the same thing pastor scott what is i'm your going to literally go to sleep yeah and find rest in the lord and, I'm, and i wake up many mornings the problem's still there my emotional attachment to it has changed other people have thought about it crazy solution comes in and I find my rest. I find peace because I say, God, I'm going to, I'm going to rest in you. And I'm resting in, I'm resting in peace in stuff that 10 years ago, five years ago, 20 years ago, I would have lost my mind. Like, am I in a movie? Well, like this okay, is so crazy. I, when you said something, I'm going to lay down and rest. I laugh because I'm laughing only because <laughs> This man can sleep through anything. Okay, literally, he can. He can, have, the, the word he can have a day where he has to come up with three hundred thousand dollars and still go to bed and sleep at night. Where I would literally never sleep again. But God got Israel there by the plagues, and you, we cannot be Israel and forget what He has done. Right. So you've got a gift. So, so I, can I speak to this for just a second? There's a gift here, and it's not always it, to me. It, sometimes it. it it, it, it's exhausting. Like there, there's something about your personality that you're so driven and you're so capable and you can handle a lot of things at one time as far as business and work and managing all of those things. Um, that it can, like for me, the, the stepping away and resting is something I can do on the regular. Like I, I easily moderately rest. I, I love the month away. It's actually more work for me in a lot of ways. Um, with cooking and cleaning and all that with all the crew with us. But um, but I find a more moderate way of resting as I go. Where you, Both are necessary. You are a very much a and then rest. And I get that. And I think that we all have to figure that out. But you are a force to be reckoned with. And I think, you know, it, when you're in a room, you, you bring so much vision that I do sometimes go, where does that come from? 
and it where it's it's exhausting for you and it's exhausting but, but yet you have to get it out because it is a gift god's given you you have it in your head yeah. and you're the person in a room that would be like boy that was exhausting to have him in the room but you're also the only one that's going to get the job done in my opinion in that way and so there's a balance being his wife of managing yeah, yeah. sometimes i'm his rest in the sense that i'll go <laughs> i'll be the one at home resting because the two of us cannot go at that pace and we're recognizing that our family needs the rest and, and making sure everybody's, well, I feel like I manage, I'm trying to manage rest and maybe I'm resting for you. I don't know. I mean, it's because as far as you yeah. run and as fast as you run, it makes yeah. me want to slow down. That, that's part of that marriage <clears throat> and that, mm-hmm. that union. And I do count on that. And I find rest sometimes knowing that you're at rest. Yeah. But to serve everyone that's on our podcast, I have to pop the balloon. Right. Um, and I'm, the, the balloon of, well, all of that comes with, there's never been an idea I've had that I haven't stolen or just seen someone else do and be like, that's great. I would like mm-hmm. to, I would like to share that wonderful thing I see somewhere else. All, and it's just, Absolutely. it might be changed. It's really just being like, well, for sure. hey, that was great. That's all it is. And, and two, um, the way that I'm coping with what is more and the way I think, because we all have a little bit more, mm. you, you get to a place where one more thing will break you. It will break you. Mm-hmm. And the only way to cope with it is you, and you get this, you need more time than you think mm-hmm. to go and be. And I'm a different person. Than I, I've always thought I was an extrovert. And you you talked about on our last podcast, introvert, extrovert. And you said, well, I, God, show me I'm more of an introvert. And I've never described myself as that, as an introvert. Mm-hmm. But I'm finding that I need more time with like just you taking a walk at night. That's not being an introvert. Or, no, I know, I know. But even you've said it. Oh, you're just okay. going to go sit on the back porch and yeah, you're going to yeah, escape. You do, but you I, do. I've needed it. My soul needs it. Yeah. And it's weird to me because I never did that. Like mm-hmm. I want just the boys to come out and just sit and talk. Mm-hmm. And I know that's a little bit. That was before I'd invite everyone from CIY over. Too, though. It, it It might be. But what I want to impress on everyone is in the word of God, much of it, it's a thread, is dedicated to rest. In the very first picture, God rested. So my 5 a.m., some days, it's been rough coming back, but my 5 a.m. Don't worry, his 5 a.m. alarm goes off every day, even if he doesn't get yeah. up at 5 a.m. It's It was, it's, Which then it was a lot of days. Say, no, listen, month. here's the good news. Even it's though you're not... Even though not you're to not, derail me, but oh, sorry. that daily 5... You have to have daily rest. You do. Which is a walk which is in the word in the morning. Mm-hmm. Then you have to have weekly. Mm-hmm. And then you have to have long seasons where you if go you away can. for yeah. marathon. And these are in our these are sustainable. Like, how, we don't need senior pastors or Chick-fil-A operators mm-hmm. or people in charge of grounds and maintenance in a city center to be there for a year or two. Mm-hmm. We need people to run for a decade. Or two. Or two. Or three. Because then you you tell a community, you can build your life on the principles of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. When you have resiliency. Sustainability. And, and you know what it takes? It takes more than you think. Mm-hmm. I, one little, I'll leave, I'll leave you with this. Um, some studies have been done recently on Sabbathing. It's not a word. Sabbathing? Yeah. Shabbat. Shabbatting. <laughs> Doing the Shabbat. Taking a Sabbath yeah. would be the proper way of saying yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, thanks. You're welcome. Um, Grammar. Good. Sabbath. Fine. Studies have been done recently on cultures. You know, there's a there's a certain um, theological camp, uh, a group of churches called Seventh Day Adventist, that are pretty strict about Sabbath. Mm-hmm. And uh, some clinical research was done on a people who observe weekly Sabbath routines. With you know, we don't do this, we don't do that. We really do disengage and breathe. And uh, you know what's funny is they live. Um, 10 years longer, 10 years longer. I believe it. So here's the funny thing though. When you do the math over a regular lifetime, if you take a Saturday for an entire lifetime, do you know what it adds up to? 10 years. 10 years. You knew so that. So really, you? well, so you know, you know what God does, it made sense. but here's what God does for you. <laughs> when you honor him yeah. and you give him a day, it's obedience to just say, I'm open to hearing from you. Mm-hmm. He gives it back to you. Mm. God, you can't. Like you, you can't mess with them. Like he'll, mm-hmm. he'll give. And when I read that Sorry. in a non-faith based book, yep. I was like, look at the, the truth of the Lord. So 
I, I, I give you this tip today in honestly saying I struggle with this, but we're trying to find rhythms to force ourselves. And well, and we reali we're realizing as we get older, there's less, we can't keep up. You can't do today what you could do 20 years ago. There, you can't. You're right. You know, we're can, tired. Do you know what I can do? What? More. Oh. Do you know why? I feel like you read a book on this. No. Tell me all about here's it. Why, here's why I can do more. Because I'm, I'm, I'm more going to try to follow obediently right. what God calls me to. And when you let go and give him that time of Sabbath, I'm telling my team that I trust him. Mm -hmm. I'm telling my team that we're going to do more and I'm going to do less because I need to decrease so he can increase. Mm. Yeah. And we will yield more, harvest more, realize more, see more, the less I do. Mm -hmm. Because I'm proving it's not by my might, it's not by my power. Right. And man, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard. But you know what I'm finding? Yeah. I'm enjoying watching God work. Mm-hmm. I, I ride a wave. I don't make the wave. I don't know when the wave comes. And I don't know when the wave will stop. And some days I'm on the surfboard and I can see all around me and it's beautiful. And other days I'm drug under and I'm hitting and my head. And other days there's a shark coming right? into... No, I'm just kidding. All right. That's our, that's our podcast on rest for resiliency, one leadership uh, thing that we're, we're in the midst of. I hope it blesses you. Yep. See you next time.